Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, A State of Troy, a Zoom version. I am uh, Jordan Moore and wish I was calling a game for you somewhere, but I've got the athletic director, Mike Bone, with me. And uh, looking forward to, to talking with you, Mike, and getting an update on, on everything that's going on. I know there's a, a lot of news breaking out there, and uh, you're right in the thick of it. It's good to see you. It's good <laughs> to see you in this uh, Zoom format. If you could, Mike, start us just give us, giving us an idea of, of your day-to-day. -day. You know, who are your conversations with? whether it's at the collegiate level, inside our university, at the state level, because there's just so many factors that are, that are going to go into all this. That's really a great question because, uh, you know, so many of us are, are in, a, in a different routine. Uh, I really don't like talking about new normals, old normals, all that stuff. It's a different routine, and it, and it clearly is a journey. And I just can't tell you uh, how inspiring it is to be with so many incredible professionals to help me, help us, help our student athletes, our program, our university through this challenge. And I think it really starts with the, the president and the president's leadership team. I've been meeting uh, virtually every night from about 5.30 to about 7. And uh, for a while there was on uh, every day, even through the weekend, just monitoring uh, developments associated with the hospital, our students, uh, and obviously every unit there is represented on campus. That team is really the core, Jordan, but then you start working with your own athletic department team and our coaches, and then having the opportunity to reach out and talk with uh, some of our wonderful stakeholders that help us. Uh, that's donors, that's sponsors, that's uh, uh, doctors, and, and our mental health professionals, all those people that are a part of that team. But then also the ability to, engage with athletic directors and conference commissioners from across the country. And I've been fortunate enough to be in this business 35 years. So it's amazing. Sometimes you'll go, Oh, I should call so-and-so they'll have an idea. And to be able to catch up with them and get some insights from them is invaluable. And I really have enjoyed watching the profession just be all in. It certainly sounds like you're talking to people from different you know, uh, walks of life that are, have to approach different challenges. Uh, but looking at it from, from the athletic standpoint and, and our conference as a whole, uh, what, what's that collaboration been like? And, and how important is it that the 12 members are in lockstep? And then you extrapolate that out into the Power Five. And, and what challenges does it pose? You know, different states are doing different things. So I mean, how, how important is it that, that everyone is aligned? And, and, and are you sensing that they are aligned? First three, four weeks of the uh, – uh, work at home initiative, if you will, being out of the office of everybody being in the stay at home lockdown of the state. Larry Scott hosts a call with every one of our athletic directors and Larry and his staff and the network personnel associated with uh, the PAC-12. And then we talk all about the different things that are going on. And you're right. So one of the biggest challenges is the difference in leadership initiatives coming from the states. So obviously California is a leader. And, and you saw how Washington, Oregon, and California governors have worked together. And then you have outliers like Colorado and, and Utah and, and different scenarios in, involving their state. And so the neat thing is Larry starts out every day with a meeting of the Autonomy Five commissioners and what they're working on. And so that input from him he helps pull the national perspective in very, very quickly. And we're fortunate to be on the Pacific time zone. So by 8.30 when those calls commence, then he already has all the download from the SEC, the Big 10, the Big 12, and uh, everybody else that helps pull that together. So uh, it, it's very, very helpful. And uh, the league has been uh, more than collaborative. I think the league is committed to trying to ensure we're doing everything we can to help everybody in the league, but recognizing the individual challenges are unique when you look at, at next football season and that's been obviously just a huge driver of, of these discussions how detailed are you getting in your conversations are, are you are you working on contingency plan a contingency plan and, and, and drilling down on it or, or are you still not in that phase yet and you're, you're still in a wait and see because the news does change so quickly no it, it's all about scenario planning and i think it's important to have a plan and to give you an idea, I mean, just having all those different scenarios play out or built, and uh, I really have to salute some wonderful members from our team, particularly Brandon Sosna, who built a, uh, an incredible tool that allows us to pull different levels that adjust levers 
that adjust uh, budgets, that adjust plans, sizes, all those different things based on those different scenarios. And that type of resource allows us to quickly see what the impact is on the budget, the finances, the moves associated with whether it's football, with, with fans, without fans, reduction fans, uh, all the different pieces that contribute to that. Yeah, when you look at it, uh, so do you see the, the bigger challenges are, are trying to make the numbers work or is it the logistics? Because obviously there's probably a ton of that as well. It's both. It's both. So, Jordan, you start thinking about, okay, from the chair you sit in, courtside and basketball, it's okay. All right, how are we going to protect you? And how are we going to protect uh, those around you? You're in close proximity. So what do we need to be able to do to put that together? What are we going to need to do in our benches? What are we doing in the locker rooms? What are we doing in buses and airplanes and all those different pieces? So clearly it's logistics, but those logistics are tied to expenditures too. I mean, trying to understand the revenue pieces and also the expense side of trying to figure out, okay, do we need to figure out, are we, when we travel, are we going to have to travel with a, a lot bigger jet or two separate planes? All those different scenarios that uh, uh, you have to look at. I'm sure you can't, you know, you can't see the future, but your head right now, are, are you envisioning, hey, I'm preparing as if we're ready to go on schedule in the fall, or are you envisioning that, that you know, I, I need to, these contingency plans are, are ultimately where we're going to go? In my heart, I'd like to believe we can figure out a way to, to play some type of season in the fall. But uh, on the other hand, uh, I recognize that we've got to be prepared in the event we, we don't. I, I just sense, Jordan, it, I just don't know for sure, but I'm the eternal optimist. I was thrilled to see the excitement and enthusiasm around the NFL draft and how exciting it was to have two Trojans picked highly. And uh, but again, that energy, the TV ratings there just show you the hunger people have for sports. And uh, we want to ensure when we are ready to go, we have all the different pieces of the plan in place so that we don't have to digress again and then uh, be in a similar boat. One piece of real positive news over this time is uh, recruiting. And obviously, we can't get into these specific recruits, but one of the uh, your initial goals upon taking over was improving the resources in the football program, but really in that department of the football program. Are you seeing that pay off? What do you think has been the key to, to this recruiting surge? Well, I think it's miraculous. It really is. It's impressive. More importantly, Clay Helton and those new coaches and the existing coaches that are on that staff, they have attacked this recruiting piece with a competitive spirit, a gusto, uh, with an all-in approach. And they've taken advantage of some of the additional tools that we've been able to put in place and young men are responding, you know, and for us currently to be ranked in, in the top five in the nation uh, with our 21 recruiting class. And uh, I anticipate some further good news coming quickly. And uh, I'm excited about that. Trojan athletic fund supporters. How important is that group, especially in this time when you're talking about, uh, all, all the finance questions and all the budget models that, that you're rolling out, how important are your, are your athletic support group members? Well, our TAF uh, donors are really the, the backbone that help us go. So without them, we don't have the ability to make the changes that we did in staff and increases in the recruiting area and the commitment to our student athletes and the commitment. For example, we have, we've sent – uh, workout kits to every single student athlete with bands and medicine balls and jump ropes and, and and if need to we've sent nutritional information those take resources to do that and so without our donors as the backbone to help us then then we don't ha we don't have the the ability to do that and I think that's a differentiating piece of what being a Trojan's about is that we do have that sense of support that Trojan family deal is re real Jordan and they want to see us be successful. So uh, that's another part of our story that I believe we've got to do a great job of showing them and for them to know that they actually had an impact in getting this thing turned around and delivering a program that we all want to have. A couple questions on the non-revenue sports for you. Uh, you know, the first one is that we have – you know, with your former em employer, Cincinnati, uh, dropped a sport. Uh, is there any threat of, of that kind of thing happening at, at USC? Where, where does that all stand? 
we, we, had, we do not have plans to drop sports. We're, we're committed to our student athletes. And we recognize that uh, the 21 sports that we have, as I like to say, we want to be 21 for 21. And uh, I know you get excited about free throw percentages. And uh, <laughs> our, our basketball coach was really good when he was a player. 21 for 21 is pretty good. What, that, what does that mean? That means our 21 sports are all viable and doing well. And so uh, our commitment to our sports is unwavering. And uh, we're excited about our future with them. And uh, that would be our last and final option. And I just don't see that in any way, shape, or form coming together. We're about long-term success. To that end, some of these sports are a little bit easier to play socially distanced or physically distanced. I mean, I think they're very close to opening up golf here in, in California again. So you, you take a sport like that that, that, that you could probably play uh, very easily. But how much of, of, of actually playing it at the collegiate level is contingent on making sure the revenue sports are also going to be good to go so that everything is, is properly funded? Well, you're right. I mean, football represents, and those TAF donations and tickets that are tied to it represent about 85% of our budget. So I think we're just going to have to continue to look for opportunities for athletes to be able to compete when we can, when it's safe, and, and when it makes sense. But uh, I really don't think it's an all or nothing piece, but uh, clearly the football piece, television revenue, television exposure, the ability to figure out how it fits into the calendar, not to impact uh, going into the spring if, if we had to. We may be able to put that together, but I think it comes down to the ability for our students to be on campus, Jordan. And uh, it's all gonna start there. Uh, lastly, Mike, uh, you, you spearheaded the We Fight uh, as one campaign, uh, created great shirts and, and sweatshirts. What, what has the response been? And, and obviously the donation piece uh, comes here shortly as uh, those, those heroic frontline workers at, at CAC will, will get their shirts. Uh, it just what, what have you seen from the Trojan family in these challenging times? Thank you for asking. And I, I think it's, it's interesting. We, uh, Coach Helton was working on the fight as one and obviously taking fight on and adding an E on to it is, is really cool. I mean, and so my hat's off for Clay for kind of getting that started and then our design people and then uh, we had our licensing people and our collaboration with the bookstore. Are you ready for this? Over 2,080 was the last number I got. I got to believe it's probably closer to 2,500 by today. That says a lot. You know, we're talking about reclaiming the torch. It's all that same synergy of passion and competitive spirit and drive that we all represent. I don't care, you know, what, anything that, that is tied to our ability to do that as one, as an institution, as a community, as a league, uh, is, is important. And so I'm thrilled, I'm touched by it. And I know I wear mine a lot and uh, I have to ask my wife all the time, hey, are we ready to get that back out of laundry? I wanna get that back on because it, it does inspire us. And isn't it neat that we are all embracing and, and featuring the fight and mentality. Yeah, it's certainly the mentality that's going to get us through this. And we really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. Hopefully we can do this again. It's been a pleasure. I always enjoy spending time with you. Thank you for your gleam and uh, just wishing everybody the best.